The visual is a type of approach to a runway conducted under an instrumental flight rules where the pilot proceeds visually clear of clouds. The airport, terrain and surrounding traffic must be in sight. The visual approach must be authorized by the air traffic controller. According to ICAO, the visual approach can commence when either all or a part of the instrumental approach procedure is not complete. This means that if you have the visual reference and the air traffic controller authorizes you, you can start the visual approach at any time during your approach. Visual approaches are not allowed with runway visual range lower than 800 meters. Let's talk about the visual approach responsibilities. When a pilot accepts a visual approach, he or she takes the full responsibility for the separation with the traffic, including the weak turbulences, terrain and obstacles. But what are the advantages of the visual approach? One, it reduces the pilot and the air traffic control workload. This is so because the pilot doesn't have to follow the multiple instructions and restrictions associated with the instrumental approach procedures. And the air traffic controller doesn't have to actively control the aircraft and issues instructions to the pilot since they are proceeding visually. Two, it expedites the air traffic flow. When you fly a visual approach, you can shorten your approach route substantially. This will increase the aircraft separation, allowing more pilots to land. 3. It increases the fuel efficiency, since a shorter route means less time with engine running. So now that we have seen what are the advantages of a visual approach, let's talk about the threats associated with this type of approach. So depending on where you perform the visual approach, it might increase your workload instead of decreasing it. This is particularly true if you perform a visual approach in a busy airport, because as previously mentioned, you are responsible for the separation with the other pilots. And if you fly the visual approach in a busy airport, you've got a lot of traffic around. Another threat that you should consider is the confusion. It happens already that some crew landed on the wrong runway, left runway instead of a right runway for example. Also happens that the crew landing in the wrong airport, so make sure you study the area before performing the visual approach. Another threat associated with the visual approach is reducing in separation. What I mean by that is that, especially in busy airports, you can get too close to the next aircraft that is landing in front of you, since you are positioning yourself visually. So, it is very important to take all these factors into consideration when choosing where to perform a visual approach. Some airlines or companies set a restriction that doesn't allow new captains and new first officers to perform a visual approach unless it is the only approach available. But now, let's talk about the go-around. What happens if you need to perform a go-around during the visual approach? Well, you should follow the go-around of the instrumental approach procedures in use. So now that you know what is a visual approach, what are the threats associated with that, what are the advantages of the visual approach and the disadvantages of that, let me give you some advice for your next visual approach. The first advice that I would like to give you is make sure you know where you're going. Pay particular attention to multiple runway airports. Identify the landing runway. This is particularly true if you've got an airport with multiple runways such as 27 left, 27 right. So make sure you identify your landing runway, the left or the right. The second advice that I would like to share with you is even if you are proceeding visual, you can still use the radio aids such as the VOR, DME, ILS to help you with a visual approach execution. The third advice I would like to give you is perform a good briefing before starting the approach. With this will prepare you well. Many pilots decide to start the visual approach when on downwind because they have a great running view and they think it's a great thing to do today, but unfortunately they are not ready. They are too high or too fast. So what happened? They disconnect the automatics and they dive into the final, which in many cases end up in a high energy scenario. Make sure you are at the right altitude and speed before starting the visual approach. Four, even if you are proceeding visually, make sure you are respecting the minimum altitude, especially when overflying populated areas. Five, coordinate with air traffic control the missed approach just in case you need to. I've seen many times people starting the visual approach because it was a nice thing to do on the late stage of the approach and they were not ready, arrive on final in a high energy situation, 
perform a go round and not know what to do and end up doing a level bust because they were not level enough at the missed approach altitude. So coordinate the missed approach procedures with the air traffic control before starting the approach. The key point in here guys is that you should be very well prepared before starting the visual approach because once you start flying the visual approach you're gonna be busy and that is not the time to figure it out stuff. It's not the time to figure it out where you have to go, what is your running news, what is the missed approach altitude and so on. All these things must be very well briefed well in advance. I hope you find this interesting. Let me know what you think in the comment below. Also go to paroclimb.com where you can subscribe for free paro training content. I wish you a good day and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.